Mid-morning update about the U.S. stock market, 10.57 a.m. Eastern Time, January 5th. I'm Rich Paz for Critical Point. Got some additional alerts and warnings here to discuss for the stock market. Uh, this is post-PMI uh, report, and I just created a video about PMIs and economy. I'm going to put that up for free, uh, so we'll post that as well. And then, of course, uh, this is an update after we've seen the market trade for a while after the uh, strong jobs report this morning. All right, so this is the S&P 500 futures, and what I wanted to show you is it's turning out to be a positive reversal day. It traded down overnight, came back above. It's taking out the prior day's high. It's back into a downside target range we have. If it can pull up above that target range, uh, I think that's a positive development. And that would be trade above yesterday's high at 47.66 and a half as also a positive development. Now, as headwinds, things that are working against us, five-day moving average, five-day McGinley dynamic, all can be a headwind in here. Then we have uh, this trend line, uh, maybe uh, problems there. So the trade probably won't get really excited until it moves above 4,800. Okay, but on the positive side, we also have this indicator that's one of my favorites very useful uh, it's oversold and trying to roll to a buy signal so I think it's fairly timely because business cycle wise uh, the market likely bottomed December 20th off that weird day that many professionals didn't quite understand what happened okay and it was just money gaming computers uh, and an imbalance actually of some uh, of the uh, derivative products okay now this is a business cycle. More demand than supply, more supply than demand. You can also use buyer sellers if you want. Okay. Now, this is kind of a picture perfect because it peaked in the center. Normally, they don't do that. They peak anywhere in between. But the longer it stays up within a business cycle, when you're looking at bottom to bottom, the more that's called right hand translation and means. A stronger market and may mean that the market is actually inside a larger uptrend or even a bull market and probably a larger business cycle all right now we have some headwinds to work through but we have some things that are backing us up that the market's kind of oversold here that has been cheap enough that they ought to put the brakes on that they ought to bounce it first even if they're going to knock it down over time so we at least ought to have a nice knee-jerk reaction well the model is saying this is probably a level three bottom. You may recall a couple of days ago I said, hey, let's assume now into early next week for a level three bottom. And I made an alert on it because I felt like it's the more important level two bottom. Okay. Now, um, so really wasn't early on that because I was really just giving you a range of time. But if you really want me to get off the fence and be more aggressive and try to pick a day, I'm willing to say this is not only a level three bottom, it's level two. So if it trades below today's low at 4702, we may have a few, if it does that now into next week, we may have a few down days, but we're probably just going to throw another dart to try to pick a bottom. However, if it's going lower by the end of next week, more so the following week, then we have issues with the larger trends and we're not keeping up with the smaller fluctuations within the larger trends and we will reevaluate. But in the meantime, the forecast is the market's now going to be bullish into next Thursday's CPI inflation report, and it may be bullish for up to five days after, at least four days after it. So in other words, consider bottom here. Maybe it's going to take a little while longer, but there's going to be this range of when we get supply uh, demand over supply, we get more buyers than sellers. Now, what I'm fascinated is the futures were upset at first over the jobs report, and then they shrugged it off, and the cash market totally shrugged it off. The cash market is thinking long-term. The strong jobs report is long-term bullish. It's short-term negative in the sense of just worrying about where are we going with inflation, where are we going with interest rates, where are we going with the Federal Reserve, and indeed some of the uh, financial products that can be used to kind of forecast when the Fed Reserve might lower its rates. It had moved from late this year all the way up to March of this year 
but I understand the probability for March has now fallen greatly down to 55% probability the Federal Reserve will lower in March. I think the Federal Reserve won't lower this summer uh, or late spring, but I think the market is comfortable with that. It can deal with that. I think the market's comfortable with interest rates not moving down much at all for years to come because really we're just back to normal interest rates for the history of this country. And I don't think some economists get that. And there's a very famous economist who's out this morning saying he's now concerned about the stock market and where we're going here and the Federal Reserve's going to have to wait a long time. And I think he's missing the point. The economy's growing. Businesses are making money. All right, and stocks are worth more. And that's all we really need to focus on right now, in my opinion. But again, takes out today's low. That'll be a sign we gotta reevaluate, take another look at things. But at the moment, I think this market can rally. And if it rallies above the high of last year in the futures, I think it's going for 49.48 minimum. It will go higher than that, okay? Now, let's flip over to the S&P 500. And what we have is that, look at this pattern here. Most people are going to send that as a very bearish day. They put it up, put it right back down. They struck the five-day McGinley. They couldn't even get it up to the five-day average, put it right back down, closed on the low of the day. It looks like a negative reversal. If this had been near a top or within an uptrend, people would say, uh-oh, that uptrend's probably over. But sometimes when it's in a downtrend, it can be a sign of a bottom. It can also be a sign we've got another leg of selling coming. Moment, it looks like the market's saying, guess it's a bottom. Now we need to trade above yesterday's high at 47.26.78, and the market's working on it. We also have the five-day average acting as resistance. We have the five-day McGinley acting as resistance. We have all these daily highs that could be resistance. Resistance means where the demand might stop buying and or the supply side sits, <laughs> steps in and they want to sell it, okay? So we have some work to do, but I think really these gaps are upside targets now, and they may be a problem for a little while, but I think they're upside targets. Now, the model's saying the market's really worth a record high. It all move up to this level, and when it moves above to a new high for the year, I think we can just forget that record level. I think it's just gonna keep moving higher. Our objective is when it trades above, 4793.3 is 4877 to 4932, and I can think it can do that in just the next 30 to 60, 90 days even, okay? But even if it's slower than that, I'm fine with it. I'm still long-term bullish. All right, next thing we wanna do is take a look at what's going on with the percent stocks above the 200-day average, and so far people really haven't sold them much at all. And the money flow looks still positive, and there's plenty of money to come into the market. The breadth looks better. They're only selling a handful of stocks, types of stocks. And then they're broadening the portfolio, buying many more types of stocks. I think that's normal behavior in this stage of the business cycle of economic growth in the stock market bull market. Now, for our weekly chart of the S&P 500 cash, we called the top there. We were early, it topped out last week, a week later or less comes down, and granted, we have time when it may go lower into later this month, but should bottom ahead of the Federal Reserve's uh, finishing up their meeting on January 31st, but it's also allowed to bottom now. And the model's saying, take a chance on this. You know, just take a chance. It dipped below our estimated fair value. It deserves to stay above it during bull markets. So again, we have to consider this market's on its way to 4860s and higher, but really the best evidence that it should do that is to take out uh, the high um, at 4793.30, all right? Now we do have bearish acting in technical indicators and they're still overbought, but I think they're gonna stay overbought and I think eventually those indicators will calm down, turn back to a buy signal, but I think people will miss out if they wait for that, okay? I think it's time to be a little more aggressive and get a chance. Now, the first clue we might be right, this market is heading to take out last year's high and for the S&P 500 to maybe head for a new record high, whereas the Dow Jones and NASDAQ have already made record highs. Well, we want it above the high of this week at 47.54.33, okay? 
And time-wise, duration-wise, I think this market now rallies into late February on into March, which means the Federal Reserve probably not going to do something at the end of the month that's really going to cause people to sell for a lengthy period of time and knock it down by huge amounts. That's uh, just not there. Uh, next Thursday, we will get the CPI inflation report, and the model saying that may cause a problem for a few hours, a couple days. It's probably about it. Market should still go higher. And here we had the jobs report that, in theory, people thought, oh my gosh, the market's going to go down, and it didn't. And the model was saying, you know, you do for level three bottom, it really shouldn't go much lower. It is time to turn up, and it's done it. So we think everything's coming into play for us here to stick with our best model forecast to be long term bullish this year, be bullish into February as an increment, and now it's time to pick a bottom. And this is the futures market, uh, uh, SP 500 and it just looks like it's time to recover into February and move out of this target that we were using for a top and we now have a target uh, at 4890 on up to 4967 plus whatever I previously uh, showed you. Uh, so I'm feeling comfortable with this. I think the VIX is in line. I think interest rates, if they want to stay a little firmer up, I think the stock market is in mood to saying we're okay with that. We don't need a big drop in interest rates anytime soon. What we need is don't raise them anymore, okay? And so I think they're going to uh, shrug off and decouple from the bond market uh, a bit long term still here, but there will always be moments they will get concerned about interest rates. Now, interest rates, I think ideally it's topping now for a level three, but unfortunately, it may not top to next week. We might see another pop in interest rates, and I don't know how they're going to deal with that worrying about inflation, okay, for that report. Um, but I just don't. I just don't think the stock market is in a mood <coughs> to uh, continue to move lower here. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. And I will be as brave as saying, and <clears throat> until we see trade below today's low, okay, um, the low of this week, in other words, I think we have to consider that we're looking at the lowest price for this year, and possibly the lowest price until late this decade. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results, and I will put out that uh, economy update relative to the PMIs. I'm going to make it free, so please pass it on to others. I want more subscribers. I want to get going here. I want to build a nice book of helping people uh, for this bull market this year as well as for this decade, but also identifying times of risk and how we're going to manage that. Thank you.